In our previous video, I demonstrated how to solve the diffusion equation on a fairly simple domain in two dimensions. It was a L-shaped polygonal domain uh, with mixed boundary conditions. In this video, we're going to modify that domain so that it becomes significantly more complex. We'll bore two holes in it and we'll add an additional square a piece to the rear corner of the domain. It turns out that it's not that much of a stretch to affect those changes using the MATLAB PDE toolbox. We're going to modify the program that I wrote for the previous video to accomplish this, and the first major modification occurs when we're establishing the model for the computational domain. We'll continue to use the polygonal model for the L-shaped region that we created as poly1 in the previous video. But I'll also need to create two circles to represent the holes that are going to be removed from that domain and one square, which as far as MATLAB is concerned is considered a um, rectangle. Like we saw with the polygon, these other shapes are modeled using column vectors of numbers. And in order to create a circle, uh, we'll have to set the first entry to be 1. This is what indicates that we're making a circle. The next two entries are the coordinates of the center of the circle. And the last entry, which must be a positive number, is the radius of the circle. So you should be able to see that I've made two circles one with center 0 0.5, 1.5, and another with a center 1.5, 0 0.5, and then they have radii of 0.25 and 0.4 respectively. The square I created by placing a 3 in the first entry of the column vector, indicating I'm making a rectangle, or, um, a, yeah, a rectangle, and um, I then specify it's going to have four sides like any rectangle should. And then the remaining points are listed out just like you would um, with a polygon. These are the x coordinates in order, followed by the y coordinates in the corresponding order of the four vertices of the, the uh, rectangle or square in this case. So this is going to be a square whose corners are at 1.9, 1.9. 2.1 comma 1.9, 2.1 2.1, .1, and 1.9 comma 2.1. Now we're going to place all of these models in what's called a geometry matrix, and a geometry matrix is just an, an array in MATLAB where each column is going to be the set of numbers. But since arrays all have to have the same number of elements in each row and the same number of elements in each column, we've got to pad the circles and the square with zeros to um, make them all the same length as the polygonal model. And that's what you can see me doing where I've appended some zeros to the end of circ1, circ2, and square1. Once I've created those models, though, I can form them into the columns of my geometry matrix GD. In order to finish setting up my geometric model for my computational domain, I still need to set up the namespace matrix, which is just going to contain textual references to each of the individual geometric components. In my case, poly1, circ1, circ2, and square1. And then I need to create a set formula that describes how they all interact with each other. So to create the namespace matrix, I set up a character array whose columns are going to be poly1, circ1, circ2, and square1. This takes two lines of code because I first set it up so that the rows are those values and then I transpose it. Then I need to set up my set formula. And what I need to remember is that I am merging the L-shaped region, poly1, with the small square on its rear corner. And then I'm removing from that the two circles. 
So that's represented in text using the addition and subtraction operators. So I am forming the union of poly1 and square1 inside of a character string. And then I'm removing or taking the relative complement of that structure with circ1 and circ2. That's all there is to a set formula. Once I've got that set formula and namespace matrix in place, I can proceed as we did in the previous video and feed the geometry matrix GD, the set formula SF, and the namespace matrix NS to the uh, decomposed solid geometry function or DECSG. And that's what is going to build my computational domain. Now, I'm going to plot this domain just for a second. And we can see that the boundaries of all parts of the original four components that make up my figure appear. This is a particular problem on where the square, uh, square one, and the polygon poly one overlap in that back corner. So I want to remove those overlapping elements. This is where the CSG del function comes in. It creates a new geometric model where those overlapping boundaries are removed. So that'll actually be the model that we use and feed to the PDE model. Once I've created it using CSG del, I'll plot it as well so we can see the difference. And here it is. So in that back corner, there are fewer overlapping boundaries than what we had before. Our next step is to attach that modified geometric model to our PDE model so that it can serve as the computational domain. This is really no different than what we did before, except I'm attaching the modified model, DL2, rather than DL. And the last major part of my workflow that's going to be different from before is how I apply my boundary conditions. And this is simply because I have more boundaries to put conditions on. I'm still going to set uh, zero Dirichlet or homogeneous Dirichlet uh, conditions on the reentrant edges on the front part of our, our L-shaped polygonal region. And all other exterior edges will continue to have no flux Neumann conditions. In addition to those, the circular edges that form the perimeter of the holes that are removed from our domain are going to have Dirichlet uh, conditions imposed, but these will be inhomogeneous Dirichlet conditions. I'll set a value of 1 on the circle with um, the smaller radius and uh, a value of 0 0.5 on the circle with the larger radius. Again, I know which, what my labels are for each of these, these pieces of the boundary because of the image that I created already using uh, PDEG plot. Once I've set the new boundary conditions for this domain, there's really nothing else that's particularly different that I have to do in my workflow in comparison to what we saw in the previous video for the diffusion equation on the simpler domain. I still will have to set the coefficients for the model and then generate the mesh and then solve it. Once all of that is done, you know, we can see what the mesh looks like and then see an animation for our um, new solution as it evolves in time. Like I did with the previous video, I'll make my code available in a link in the description for this video, or if you happen to be viewing it at the Mathematical Science uh, Research Launchpad, then you probably have already found the source code there.